Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. Today, I want you to dig really deep into all your quilting scraps and make these three easy scrap busting projects with me. Did I mention they're useful too? Enough talking already, let's get busy. The first item on today's agenda is a cord keeper. This is just not any cord keeper. Check this one out. There's a wire in it with pretty fabric on it so that if you need to keep a cord, hence the name cord keeper, this will keep a super tight hold of all of your cords. And all you're going to do is twist tie it like you would like a bread tie or something like that. They're not in there loose at all. Super simple design. I picked up this floral wire at my Dollar Tree. These are a dollar a piece and you get about six feet in them. Six feet, one packet, will give you about six or seven cord keepers. This floral wire is super bendy and it is waterproof if you need to wash your cord keeper. I cut approximately a 10 and a half inch piece of wire. Now, if you're a quilter, you have a lot of these two and a half inch strips just hanging around your sewing room, just waiting to be made into this really cute cord keeper project. My jelly roll strip is approximately 11 and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide. Now you can bend these with your fingers, but I chose to grab this little needle nose tool that is helpful. All you're going to do is just curl in each end of this wire. I put a tab of electrical tape on each end as well. That will just help it so that it doesn't poke through. These pieces are approximately one and a half inches long. You're just going to set it on the end like that. Go like that. See, it makes like a little tab at the end and that's not going to poke through this fabric. Doesn't matter what it looks like. <laughs> it's gonna be inside. So once you get your electrical tape on the ends, set that aside, you're going to take your two and a half inch jelly roll strip over to your ironing station, and you're going to fold in about an eighth to a quarter of an inch on the ends. It doesn't have to be precise like our quilting projects do. And then you're also going to come in and fold in a quarter inch on both of these sides. And then just take and fold this over. If you feel like you need to pin this as you fold it to help keep you folded, you can do that. I do that sometimes. You're just going to fold this over and make a memory crease. Pop a pin here in the end, and then pop another pin at this end. Take this to the sewing machine, start here, back stitch. Go here, pivot at the corner, come all the way down, stop right there at that corner and back stitch. Take the one end of your wire and kind of fold that in a little bit so that it makes it through the opening. Push this in just like that. And you should have a good inch or so at the end clearance. You can see there if I bend it, if it's pressed all the way here, because you don't want it too tight toward the end because it will stress the fabric and you don't want that. So now we have that opening right there. So push this wire all the way to the end here. Take it to your sewing machine, drop your needle here, back stitch, and go over here to this side and close everything up and back stitch. You have your cord keeper here and all you're going to do is just bunch up your wire, lift it up on both sides and give it a twist. This is such an easy, no-brainer project to use up a lot of those scrappy jelly roll strips that are just hanging around in your sewing room from leftover projects. Have you ever been at your computer keyboard and had some wrist fatigue? Thinking to yourself, if only my wrist was up just a little bit more. Well, you know, they do sell some things like that online, but they typically come in sets of two. One for the mouse that helps hold your wrist up while you're dealing with the mouse. And the other one is usually in front of the keyboard 
so it elevates your wrist a little bit so there's not much fatigue there. Let me show you what I came up with to help us with some wrist fatigue. It's this tiny little wrist pillow. It reminds me of a pin cushion, right? It has this curve right here. This curve is going to ergonomically help us to take some of that fatigue off. Slip your hand right through here and you can put it anywhere you like. If you need it to be more balanced up higher, you can do that. Or if you need it down low, you can just simply push it down low. I don't have this real tight, so it's not even bothersome on my wrist. If I was on a desktop and I needed to move my hand over to the mouse, I would then have to put my hand or wrist onto that particular wrist support. But with this, all you need is one wrist support for one wrist and one for the other. And you can move this any which way that you like. You don't have to be stationary in that one spot. You can do your mouse. Here, if you're on a laptop like I am, you can go up to do the keys. And if you find that this is up too high, if you're up there by the keys, you can simply just push that back and that makes everything really super level. I cannot tell you how much this has helped my wrist, especially since I do have arthritis. For this wrist support project, I am going to give you two separate sizes, one for a small, and one for a large. For reference, my wrist is approximately six inches around. If you're making the small wrist support, you will need a four inch by five inch piece of scrap fabric. If you would like to make the large wrist support, you will need a five inch by six inch piece of scrap fabric. For the smaller wrist support, you will need a five inch piece of elastic for the larger one, you will need a six inch piece of elastic. I am also using some scrappy fusible fleece. Now you can also use any scrap batting that you might have as quilters. I know that we have a lot of that laying around too. What this tiny piece of batting or fusible fleece does, it adheres to the inside of our wrist support and it keeps all of those scrap fabrics from becoming bumpy that are inside of here because that's what I stuffed mine with. Two and a half by one and a half. You'll need two of those if you're going to use them. Check out this. I went through my garbage to get this. I'm sure you all have this in your sewing garbage can too. Little pieces of batting that are unusable. Scraps of fabric that are too tiny to sew with. So this is going to be the stuffing of our wrist support. What I like about using this instead of like a polyfill, polyfill will smash down after some time. With this, the scraps, because they're so tiny and, and dense, so to speak, when you put it all together, it's a lot harder to smash it all down. I call this scrap carnage. <laughs> Take our little scrappy fleece and lay them on both sides. This is the long ways and this is the shorter way. If you fold this in half, you're going to get a better idea of where that center is. Once you have that where you want it, it doesn't have to be perfect either. Press your fusible fleece on. This is the five inch side right here. So you're gonna take five inch to five inch and just fold it in half for a second and finger press the center. And you can see the center right there. And while you still have that crease, go ahead and mark it. Come in a half an inch from this edge in. Find that center area, mark a line right there. So that is our center. Now from this center to this corner, I need to make a line like that from that center to that corner make the other line you end up with this sort of v-shape round that out a little bit don't make that so harsh that curve now flip it this way and fold it like that you pop a pin through both layers make sure everything is even cut through both layers following this line 
throw this in your scrappy carnage pile. <laughs> now you can unpin that, open this up. Now where that was creased from here to here, find the center somewhere. And then set your five inch piece of fabric between that somewhere. Just eyeball it. You're going to pin that. And you can see that you have some slack over here and all you're going to do is lift that up, find the center and put a pin in. Oh, kind of fold this this way, just like that. You're going to lift this up to meet this edge right here. Pinch your finger right over top of that elastic. Lift your pin out. While your finger is still pressing down where that elastic is, you're going to repin that so the top, bottom, and elastic are all pinned together. Come over here to this side, press your finger down, unpin, and repin. Once those are pinned, decide where your opening is going to be. It can be over here, here, or on this side. It doesn't really matter. But what you do need to keep in mind is you will have this sort of outer seam, so to speak, right there. So just keep that in mind. I am going to mark here and approximately here. And this is where my opening is going to be to shove all of my carnage in there. <laughs> Drop your needle here, back stitch, and go an eighth to a quarter of an inch up to this area to the corner, pivot, come down this way. When you get to here, you're going to stop and back stitch. Break thread, drop your needle right here, back stitch, go up that curve, pivot once you get to the corner, come all the way down and back stitch. And I'll meet you back here. Turn your work right side out. I wouldn't pull on the elastic to get it out though because that would make you mad if you sewed all that and then you pulled on it too hard and it came out of the seams. Use a pokey tool to get your corners nice and crisp. You give it a hot press all along the edges because we are going to top stitch. You're going to tuck in a seam allowance here, eighth to a quarter of an inch. Once you get it where you want it, you'll press that down. You can see there everything is nice and pressed. Now grab your carnage. What I try to do is push the carnage toward all of the corners first. Break these pieces up if you have to or cut them down smaller because it's going to do you well to have them smaller because this is such a tiny project. Because we lined it with flat pieces of fusible fleece right along the areas where our wrist is going to actually hit, we are not going to feel any bumpy from all of these scraps. I'm going to push all this as far away from this seam as I can. I'll shift it all back once it's sewn, but for now, I want it far away. <laughs> and you're going to squeeze it. You can pop a pin or a clip or whatever you do and head over to the sewing machine and make sure your needle is on the farthest edge because this is bulky right here and it'll lift your presser foot. So make sure you can even use a zipper foot if you want. I'm not going to, I'm going to just go for it. Drop your needle in the corner, stitch all the way around till you get to here and back stitch here. It's honestly really comfortable. And hey, it doubles as a pin cushion. <laughs> Our next project is going to be some scrappy crumb coasters. These coasters are going to be crummy on both sides. <laughs> I do use batting or fusible fleece is what I have here inside of my coasters. And that will help to absorb any liquid that might come off of the glass as it perspires and whatnot. I took a regular ball jar plastic lid, put it down, traced the circle, and then I added a quarter inch to that circle. Then I took this template after I cut it out, placed it on yet another piece of paper, traced around that, 
Then I added another quarter inch to that. So the big main part of our coaster is going to be four and three quarter inches in diameter. The batting and fleece one is just smaller than that. So here you can see I have already cut out my batting. But before I can cut out my crumb coasters, I need to make my crumb coasters. And that's where all of the scraps and crumbs come into play. A while back, I did a video on how to organize all of your scraps. And what I did was cut up different strips or strings as they're called in quilting and made different lengths of those in all different colors starch them at that time and then I've been storing them. So a lot of these scraps are coming from those strings. So what we're going to do first is look and see what we got here. And then we're just going to start adding fabrics together. I do try to back stitch at the beginning and end of each seam. That will help keep everything together. I do open the first few seams of any crumb or scrap project. It will just help things lay nicer <laughs> in the end. I do give everything a good press right after I've attached it. I want this smaller because I want it to look more scrappy. So at an angle, we'll just trim that. Try to trim it straight though if you're using your scissors because you want a nice clean straight edge, not a curved one. I will add this purple one. Now this one I will just push to the side. If you've never scrapped or crumb piece before, you are in for a treat. <laughs> this is some of the most fun that I have in quilting is this type of piecing. For this one here, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to sort of put that piece at an angle. I'll sew that and then I'll trim that off afterwards and then I'll press it. The goal is to try and get this crumb piece that you're piecing together to be a little larger than this template right here. So you can see we have a little bit more to go on this one. You can take a look here. This one is ready to go. <laughs> so let's add a little bit more on here and then we can assemble our coaster. For this, I'm going to diagonally put this just like that. And we are there. And that did not take long at all. Maybe 10 to 15 minutes to make both sides. It may take less time or it may take longer, depending on how big you want these pieces to be in here as you're piecing together. So let's trim these up. You'll only need this larger template to cut out your crumb coasters. So let's turn this around to the back. Lay your template down. Trace around. Lay the template on your other piece and trace around this one as well. So take your scissors and cut around on that line. Next, you're going to take your fusible fleece or your batting. Now, if you do have regular batting that you're using, you may need to make this a bit bigger so that your needle catches it within here so that it doesn't bunch up like say you wash it or something like that. The fusible actually keeps the fleece in place or the batting or, or whatever, what have you. We'll center that right there and then you're going to put a hot press in it to get the fusible fleece to adhere. And that's on there pretty good. Now what you'll want to do is find one of the edges on both pieces that don't have a lot of seams. So like you wouldn't want to choose one of these right here where the seams are. What you want to use is a spot that is free and clear of seams. So I'm going to choose this side over here. And then what I'm going to do is add a little bit of glue. This is just regular stick glue. I'm going to add some glue right along this edge. What I'm going to do here is just kind of press down 
what a quarter inch, an eighth to a quarter inch would be. This is going to be really helpful to us when we go to sew these coasters uh, right sides together. But we're just doing one edge. So that's kind of what that looks like. You're gonna look over here and see which part of this circle has no seams and this one does. So this is a good choice right here. We're just gonna take and put, you know, a couple, an inch and a half or so, two inches, whatever. You're going to push that down. Kind of going in the shape of a curve. You don't want any straight edges here. It's not a very good curve, is it? And you can see our curve there. Just put right sides together and where you glued down on the curve, you're going to match those up. And then you're going to pop a pin or two in it, right in the center, so, so nothing shifts. We're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to drop our needle close to where this glued area is tacked down. Backstitch real good, sew around a quarter inch, around, 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 and you're gonna to wanna to stop somewhere along this area where you put the glue. We need to keep this open to turn our work. So we'll sew up to there, and then I'll show you what I have. And you see there the opening, and you're going to turn your work through there. can utilize some clips to help you or you can pin it. Once you have everything pinned along the edge here, go ahead and close that up and go all the way around putting a nice top stitch in this. So here is our reversible crumb coasters. Super cute. Put your favorite on the top. Fray up a strip of old fabric or new fabric. you end up with a darling, and I mean an absolute darling set of crumb coasters. Tell me down in the comments, which project did you like the best today? Which one will you actually make? I want you to take a look at the screen in front of you. I have handpicked some great videos just for you if you enjoyed today's tutorial. Go ahead, click on one of them, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.